guys um and so today is episode four of is lit i'm um, talking about young adult literature here on glitz and grammar um again i'm casey um you can follow me on twitter at at ms jones does ela um you can also check out my, my portfolio website at www.msjonesdoesela.weebly.com and i'll have that listed in the little information section underneath um, but today I want to talk to you about um, a book that I read called Wolf Hollow by Lauren Wolk. Um, it is a um, historical fiction novel um, that takes place um, in during World War II, but on the home front. But the war doesn't have like a whole ton of um, significance, seemingly, unless um, you read really closely. Um, but it focuses on um, 12-year-old Annabelle. Um, who is going through um, her regular everyday life, um, going to school. A new girl comes in, her name is um, Betty Glengower, and um, she isn't um, the most ideal classmate. Um, she picks on Annabelle, Annabelle a lot. Um, she um, like will poke the back of her legs with a pencil, she'll throw spitballs at the back of her head, um, just really just, just bullies her a lot, and um, tells if she tells anybody, um, if Annabelle tells anyone that, um, it'll just get worse. And so Annabelle's kind of, um, in problems about that. But then, um, later on in the book, um, Betty goes missing. And people suspect that it is, um, this veteran from World War One that lives in, um, the town of Wolf Hollow, um, whose name's Toby, um, because he tends not to stay in one place. He wanders around the town a lot. He's quiet, very reserved. Um, has that air of mystery about him. And so, because people don't know a whole ton about him, um, they suspect that he's probably up to no good. And so, um, Annabelle um, lets Toby know that um, he could be questioned about um, where he was when Betty went missing, and just all these strange events happen um, that ends up Betty is responsible for, um, such as like a tripwire across... Um, two trees in, on a path that um, Annabelle and her brothers take to school, and um, someone throwing a rock at one of Annabelle's um, friends and ends up um, injuring her eye really, really badly. Um, but um, the book, um, I'll let you guys read the end of it to know what happens, um, but there's a lot of questioning of Toby, questioning of Annabelle and her family about um, what could happen. Betty's still missing. Um, you'll have to read the end of it to, um, to find out what happens, um, if they ever find Betty, and all that happens. Um, but it's a really, really good book. I really recommend it. It's good for middle schoolers, so it's written from the point of view of a 12-year-old, so it's right in their age range. The vocabulary is really, um, simple, is what a 12-year-old would say. Um, it's a really, really good book. Um, I really would recommend it. Um, in thinking of our overarching theme of conflict, um, as I mentioned kind of in my little summary blurb, um, there is conflict. Um, especially between um, Annabelle and Betty. And um, this can kind of talk, lead um, into conversations about bullying, um, but you can kind of see the conflict between Annabelle and, um, and Betty throughout. Like I said, um, Betty, it's the little it's the little picking things at Annabelle during class, um, like the poking um, her with the pencil or throwing stuff at her during class, um, but then it becomes bigger. Um, because that tripwire that I said um, ends up hitting um, Annabelle's brother in the head and ends up cutting him pretty bad because it's a sharp wire. Um, and so, like, it just leads to a bunch of physical things. And, um, like I said, Betty, it's Betty that ends up throwing the rock at um, Annabelle's friend Ruth and ends up um, injuring her eye so bad they have to um, remove her eye. Um, so it does get um, very physical later on. And there's, like, the physical part. But then there's also this sort of inner conflict that becomes outer conflict, which is, um, in about wrestling with morality, um, issues, um, is it okay for them to hide Toby, um, because they believe that Toby hasn't done anything wrong in concerning, um, Betty's disappearance, um, do they keep Toby, do they not, um, and then when they decide to keep Toby, um, it's kind of them against the rest of the town who do believe that Toby has something to do with what um, Betty had, Betty had done. 
or Betty's disappearance, not what Betty had done. Um, and so that concept of conflict between um, who's really right in the situation. Do they take him away um, because he's being questioned or he's been accused? Uh, or do they keep them because um, they believe that he hasn't done anything wrong? Um, that inner conflict that um, Annabelle does wrestle with um, throughout. And then the conflict of the overarching theme of the war that's going on and how that affects how um, certain people see other people. Um, there is a German immigrant that is living in Wapalo that um, faces some questioning at some point. Um, and then there's Toby who's wrestling with um, his PTSD from his experience from World War I. Um, so those are some of just a few examples of conflict that we've seen throughout. Um, like I said earlier, this um, book is really relatable for middle schoolers. Um, it's written in their language, which I think is a really um, unique and really nice touch that the author Lauren Walk has added into um, this book. Um, there's a lot of things you can do as a teacher to um, get your kids more involved in the book. Um, like I said, there's obvious links to World War II, which you could use cross-curricularly. It's a tongue, it's a, mouth, it's a mouthful. Um, if you're talking about World War II in your social studies class, um, or you have a, so a social studies teacher that you're kind of teamed up with, um, you two could um, pair up what they're learning in that class with this book in an ELA class. I think that'd just be um, a really nice way for students to get both um, a more fictionalized viewpoint of what's going on in the home front versus the factual um, information that really did that happened in the war in the 40s. Um, and you can also um, compare and contrast typical World War II books um, with this one. Um, there's, uh, like I said, the war isn't mentioned a whole, whole lot in the book um, versus like other World War II books um, or historical fiction books that are set during World War II um, where the war is very heavy. Um, it has a very heavy presence. Um, so you can kind of compare and contrast the differences of how this book is similar and different um, in, in that sort of way. Um, when I was talking with some of my friends about different strategies, um, one of them suggested using um, prediction skills um, because this book, it does have kind of that air of mystery to it. Um, so you could definitely use that, um, those prediction skills and talking about prediction and um, to kind of see what kids think um, will happen as the book progresses. And then finally, um, you could use readers, the reader's theater strategy um, to get students more involved in the reading. Um, obviously, you don't have them throwing rocks or trip, using trip wires on each other, but kind of having them get involved and like adopt a character and or a narrator or anything like that to kind of get them more actively involved in the story. Um, so those are the few things that I um, wanted to talk to you about concerning this book will follow. Um, again, always, as always, um, you're welcome to follow me on Twitter at, at Ms. Jones Does ELA. Um, you can check out, check out my portfolio. I'll have the links below. And if you like the video, share and subscribe. Thanks for watching. You guys rock.